I have a special treat for you today. I am sharing my chocolate cake recipe. This is a never before shared recipe and I'm so excited to bring it to you today. This is the chocolate cake that I use in all of my cake carving. It's beautifully dense, still really moist, very rich and delicious. <laughs> I'm also gonna share this ganache buttercream recipe with you, so let's get started. Now there's a lot of different ways to get chocolate into a chocolate recipe and you can use uh, powdered chocolate, you can melt down regular chocolate, you can just use chunks of chocolate. So for this cake, we want a nice rich chocolate flavor and so for that I'm actually using baking chocolate, unsweetened baking chocolate. The brand that I like is Baker's but of course use any brand that you like. Uh, and the first thing that we're gonna do is melt it. Now, a lot of people just microwave their chocolate and that's fine. In fact, my microwave has a melt chocolate button on it that I use all the time and I love it. But, but I find that when you microwave chocolate, it actually cools a lot faster. It doesn't stay as fluid as long. So I prefer using a double broiler method. Now this is not an official double broiler. This is a saucepan with boiling water and then a bowl on top. That way you get all the heat from the steam and it will melt the chocolate beautifully, but it won't burn the chocolate. Now it's gonna take a little while to melt and then it's gonna take a little while to also cool down slightly. Uh, so I always start my cake by starting this right away and then I put my other ingredients together and get started on that. The next component of this recipe is boiling water. So adding boiling water to cake recipes actually is one of the things that helps them maintain just a ton of moisture. So this is great for this cake. Now I add some cocoa to mine to add to that extreme chocolate flavor that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna add my regular cocoa and and a little bit of this dark cocoa. And whisk it together. You can always substitute some of the cocoa or all of the cocoa for uh, coffee or espresso powder if you like that. A lot of people love that flavor with uh, the balancing the chocolate. I personally just don't. <laughs> now I'm gonna add some oil. Now you can use vegetable oil or I prefer using olive oil. I feel like vegetable oil has kind of a rancid taste in baked goods a lot of the time, so I avoid it and I use a really good olive oil. Um, but again, best part about cooking and baking for yourself is you can personalize all of this, so use what you have around. And then we're gonna add the sour cream. So technically this is a sour cream chocolate cake, but I'll tell you a little secret. If I don't have sour cream, I'll just use plain yogurt. I actually use plain yogurt and sour cream completely interchangeably when it comes to baking and even most cooking. So if you don't have sour cream, go ahead and use uh, plain yogurt. I would say half the time that I make this cake, it's with yogurt and it turns out just as amazing. Now we're gonna stir the sour cream oil and chocolate water together. All right, let's check back in with our unsweetened chocolate. Oh, check it out, it's smooth, it's melted. Now let's take it off the heat and let it cool slightly. Now we're gonna mix the dry ingredients. First, we have the flour. Then we have the sugar, baking soda, and salt. And then give it a little mix. Now we're gonna add this uh, chocolate water oil sour cream <laughs> mixture to the dry ingredients. And we're gonna mix that. And if you don't have side scrapers as part of your mixer, make sure that you're using a spatula and scraping around the sides or anywhere low where maybe the powder is stuck. All right, now we're going to add the eggs. First thing that we're gonna do is add four eggs into here and whisk it. And the reason for that is all the ingredients are going in the same place and I don't wanna get something new dirty. <laughs> but if you want to get out a whole other bowl and slightly beat your eggs in that, feel free. You don't have to beat them too much. Like I just said, we don't wanna overbeat the eggs. You just kinda of wanna break them up and then mix it again. Now we're ready to add, oh, this smells so good. I know it doesn't taste good because there's no sugar or anything in this, but oh, it's just so pretty, it smells so good. All right, so now we're gonna take our melted chocolate that's slightly cooled and we're gonna add it to our mixture. We're gonna put it down low and then pour it in slowly in a nice steady stream. Oh, look at that, it looks amazing. Now I like taller looking cakes, so this recipe is actually gonna make three eight inch layers. So I'm gonna prepare my pans now. So I have three eight inch cakes. First thing I'm gonna do is I like to use uh, Baker's Joy, but whatever nonstick spray or whatever you like, use that. I always hold my pan this way and spray into it. One, that catches kind of the overspray that way. Uh, and if you hold it this way and you try to spray down, these actually don't spray as well when they're angled as they do when they're upright. The thing I do, I do it over the sink. 
That way it doesn't make as much of a mess. Then I take my cake circle and I put it right down inside. Another tip is to use a big even strips. What that does is you get it wet, you soak it. I do this right at the beginning before I do anything else. You soak it in cold water and then you wrap it around the base of your pan like that. And what that helps do is actually keep the outside of your pan a little bit cooler so that the cake can cook more evenly instead of the outside cooking really fast and leaving the center raw. Uh, one final tip that you can do is to take a flour nail and shove it in the middle of the parchment circle before you put it into the pan. And then that helps heat the core of your cake. And then pour this luscious batter right into the pan. Separate it evenly between your three pans. And now it's time to put it in the oven to bake it. All right, let's talk frosting. If you've seen any of my other cake videos, you know that my go-to is ganache. One, it's delicious. It's made the same way as a truffle. So you're basically putting frosting your cake with that rich truffle center and it's so good. The reason that I prefer it under fondant is you can get those nice, those edges nicely crisp or if you're carving a cake, you can get your details uh, really, really, really detailed. <laughs> those want to say that. <laughs> so that's why I prefer ganache for that. Um, but for just, you know, a layered cake like we're doing today, not everybody likes ganache. As rich as it is, as delicious it is, as it is, because it sets and gets firm, it's not always the best choice for a nice gooey, ooey slice of cake. So another option, of course, is buttercream. Buttercream has a ton of different options. For me, American buttercream is simply too sweet. Um, and then like the Swiss meringue or Italian meringue buttercreams, they can be a little bit tricky to make. Uh, and for me, they're like super buttery, which sometimes there's a place for that. Sometimes I really like it, but I just want a rich, dense chocolate cake with a nice, rich frosting. So I'm going to kind of marry the two. We're going to do a ganache buttercream. So we'll still have more of the softness of our buttercream, but it will have the richness of the ganache. So how we're gonna start that first is by making a batch of ganache. So I have my pan here and I've actually already turned the heat on, so this is gonna simmer when we pour it in. But first we're gonna take our cream and we're gonna heat it up. While the cream is heating up, you want to weigh out your chocolate. Now, I like to mix my chocolates. I like to use a couple different kinds. Uh, but of course, if you have a favorite chocolate, you can go ahead and use that. If you just use one brand of chocolate, your frosting is gonna taste just like that chocolate. So if you love Dove and you use Dove, it's gonna taste like Dove, Hershey's, Hershey's, you know, etc. So I like to mix mine for that reason. One of the chocolates that I really like is the Trader Joe's chocolate bars. Yes, you have to cut them, which is kind of a pain versus like buying them already in wafer shape, which melts beautifully. Um, but it's a really high quality chocolate for a really great price. Now, you don't want your cream to overheat. You can see this is just starting to steam a little bit. And we're starting to get uh, some nice little bubbles around the outside edge. So this is ready. What you don't wanna do is wait until it's already boiling. That is too hot and it will end up curdling your ganache. You just want this to be just before boiling. So those outer edges, little bubbles. And we're gonna pour it directly over the chocolate now. Now, if you didn't cut your chocolate down quite enough and you still have some pretty big chocolate chunks, just like we did with the chocolate that went into the cake, you can put this over a uh, small pot of boiling water and that will help melt the final little bits of chocolate. It will, of course, add to this taking a little bit longer to cool if you do that, um, but you definitely wanna make sure this is smooth with no chunks or you're gonna regret it later. So it's worth it to take a little bit more time to get the right results. Look how beautiful and smooth that is. A couple chunks left, just keep stirring. The cakes are cooling. The ganache has cooled to room temperature and so now we're gonna start the rest of the frosting. First, we're gonna take some butter, a lot of butter. Now you want the butter to be slightly softened but still a little bit on the chilled side. So I took it out when I started the frosting and then by the time the ganache had cooled enough that it was ready for this step, it was, uh, it was perfect. And then we're gonna beat it until it actually changes. If you beat butter long enough, it will start to get uh, lighter and thicker. And uh, if you're listening to your mixer, it, you should hear it change a little bit. It's hard to, anyway, I'll show you. <laughs> okay. 
Now, while I'm beating the butter, I'm actually also gonna add a little bit of corn syrup. Like I've mentioned in the past, corn syrup is a stabilizer and it helps with uh, frostings and caramels and sauces and marshmallows and stuff like that. So I recommend it. You can leave it off if you really kind of don't like the idea of it, but it will end up with a better texture to your frosting if you do, and it's really not much. It's only two tablespoons. All right, now our butter and corn syrup mixture is thick and ribbony and luscious, and it looks like a nice thick frosting by itself already, although it wouldn't necessarily taste that great. Now that the butter is beet and luscious looking, we're gonna add some powdered sugar, and this is gonna continue making it more like a buttercream. And now we're gonna add the ganache while it's beating on low. Now you wanna turn it on high and beat it. Now, as you can see, it's a little too runny to be an effective frosting right now. So we're gonna chill it. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can chill it for five minutes, beat it, chill five minutes, beat it, chill five minutes, beat it. It'll take a couple of times and it's a really effective way to do it. Or you can um, and just chill it for about 30 minutes and then beat it, but uh, kind of depending on your refrigerator and how chilled this already is, uh, it might chill a little too hard and you might get chunks. So I prefer the, you know, chill five minutes beat, chill five minutes beat, chill five minutes beat until you are happy with the thickness and the consistency. But it is okay if you leave it a little bit longer than the five minutes or maybe forget about it like I tend to do. Just don't leave it for too long or you'll have to then let it come back down to a little bit warmer to be able to effectively beat it. It's done. Look at how thick that is. This is gonna be great for frosting. So the frosting's done, the cakes are baked. It's time to put it all together. So the very first thing we're gonna do is level our cakes. As you can see, using the bake even strips and having uh, the metal in the center and adjusting for altitude, it's actually left the cake super level already, but not quite perfect. So it's totally worth doing this. Plus this will make all of our cakes the same height. So on a good turntable and with a good serrated knife, you're gonna hold it the height that you want it and just spin around. This is just our first little pass. We're just marking the cake. We're letting the turntable do the work for us. After a circle, you should meet back up to your first line. And if you did, <laughs> that means you were holding it flat enough. Then now you go a little bit deeper. You really don't have to um, do a ton of work. The, the turntable kind of does your work for you. And perfect. And then I keep the tops and you can either use them for like a trifle or honestly, I just eat them. <laughs> they don't last very long at my house. Pull off a little bit of frosting. And spread. Now, I am all about turntables. They are life changing when it comes to cake decorating. And then repeat. Flop and frost. Now most cakes after they cool when you bake, they kind of shrink up a little bit on the top. So the bottom is always the widest part. So while I go uh, bottom down, bottom down in the first two layers to the last layer, I flip it over and I have the bottom on top that gives me crisper corners and that wider point at the top of the cake. And then you frost the top layer. So plop and spread yet again. Now we're gonna frost the sides. You can use to pipe and then spread or just add and spread as you go. Clean off your spatula and knock down those corners. And uh, now the cake's even, we're gonna add another coat of frosting to make messy frosting, but now we know that every square inch is covered. This cake is over on the Working With Lemon channels for their Matilda Revolting Children musical number as the chocolate cake. It's perfect in my opinion. <laughs> so go check that out. Oh yum, check that out. As a quick end note, thank you so much to everyone who sent me messages over the last couple of months as I have been a little MIA. Uh, one, I took off summer to spend it with my children. I went to Harry Potter World in Orlando. I went to Disney World. We, my kids and I had so much fun and I got inspiration for so many fun recipes I'm gonna be bringing you this year. 
Also, I set up my kitchen as a live streaming studio. So every Wednesday, I will be coming at you live with a live cooking show, and then I'll still be doing the edited content as well. So leave me a comment down below, let me know if there's something you'd like to see live or something you'd like to see edited. And of course, what cake should I make next with this chocolate cake recipe? Don't forget to send me pictures or tag me in social media when you make anything that you've seen here, especially this cake, my very favorite. I've really been nervous about sharing this with you. I hope you all love it as much as I do. And now for my favorite part, get to eat it. Look how luscious this looks. Look at that frosting and that cake. It's so good. Cheers. Mmm. Seriously, so good. Three, two. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to Ashley Marie Cakes, the best baker in the world. <laughs> Please. <laughs>